Hello, today I'll be configuring the CyberArk Secure Web Sessions. First, we'll review the traditional PSM web app use case and how that looks and how we can improve that. Then I'll go ahead and add and configure a web app using user credentials. Uh, the web app I'll be adding is GitT. Then we'll switch the web app to a shared credential model where we will retrieve the credentials from the vault. Then I'll set up the secure web sessions tenant. Uh, this will allow us to enable secure web sessions on the web app. And then finally, once we've done some testing, we'll review the secure web sessions audit and recording capabilities. Here we are logged into Privilege Cloud and I've lined up onboarded a typical scenario where we have an application admin account. In this case, it's git t admin one. This is an active directory account that's onboarded using this platform here. And of course, this platform has a connection component that opens up a web browser to connect to the git t web portal. So our goal is instead of using PSM to connect to this web portal, we'll use secure web sessions. Before I do that, I'll just show you with you what it would look like when you use PSM. So I'll hit the connect button here and I'll use the HTML5 gateway and press the connect button. As you can see, we're logged in. We can improve the user experience of how the administrator can interact with this application. And that's by using secure web sessions. But for now, I'll disconnect this and we'll get started by setting the use case up. First, we'll head over to the identity administration. And on the left-hand side here, we have the web apps section. So we'll just go to that. And this is where administrators can onboard web apps. For the first use case, I'll just focus on how you can add on Git T. So we'll select add web apps here. Because Git T is not in the existing catalog, we'll go to custom and we'll select browser extension advanced. We'll select add here and I'll press yes. I'll close this dialog box and that will redirect us to this screen here. We'll give the application a name. We'll just replace the description. You could add in notes. I'll update the logo by selecting browse here. I've got the logo on my desktop and I'll just select save for now. And the page doesn't update the logo here, but if I go back to web apps and refresh, we can see the logo is updated here. So I'll go back into the Git T application and the, up, the logo is updated here. Uh, the next section is permissions. Normally you would set up a role or add active directory groups uh, in here, but I'm just going to add users one by one. So first I'll add in myself. I'll also add in the user John because John has access to the vault. And I'll also add a user that doesn't have access to the vault just for a demonstration later. And we'll add in Zoe here. I'll select add. And so the permissions required for this is the run and automatically deploy down here. So I'll just save that. But of course, in a real world environment, you would select, a, you'd create a role and add these users to that role accordingly. We'll come down to policy here. You could create a policy to make users MFA again when they launch the application. I'll show you that later, uh, but for now we'll go to the account mapping. And under this section, you have a few options. I'll go through a few demonstrations on what those are, but first we'll stay with the prompt for username. And what this means is the user will be asked when they first open the application on what credentials should be used. I'll now head over to advanced. And this is a sample script or, or login sequence on how you can access the application. Offline, I've prepared a script to log on to this application. So I'll just clear all this out and paste in the logon sequence. So just to explain it, uh, this URL is the login screen for Git T and the username here will grab the username from the relevant source, whether it's stored in WPM or from the vault. But what we need to do is append the domain name in this example. So that's what we've got configured here. For the Git T application, I actually can log in with both the 
SAM account name as well as the UPN. So I didn't have to do this, but I just wanted to share what that would look like. And then we, of course, fill in the password from that source. So I'll just save that. And if I open up the user portal, and of course we can see a new application here in the user portal. So if the user clicks on the application, uh, it'll prompt them with this message here uh, that we need the username and password. So the user would select yes on this. The user could add tags or add this item to a folder if they wanted to. And down here under user identity, the user has the option to put in their username and password manually, or they can select this tick box here to get password from safe. So I'll just select that, search for my name, and we should find the PS underscore Brad, which has the brad.admin account. This brad.admin account does have access to Git T. I just wanted to add that separately and I'll click save here. Once that's done, it should redirect to the Git T logon screen. And as you can see here, the domain name is being appended to the username. So that's working as expected. And we're logged in as brad.admin. I'll just sign out and close this tab. So that's one way you can push out a web app to end users. But sometimes you'll have a web app where you want to control the username and password for that web app. So if I open up the admin portal again here and come down to web apps and come down to git t here, we'll come back to account mapping and then we'll select all users share one name. So here you could enter in a, a static username and password if you wanted to, but because this password for this Git T account is rotated by the CPM, we need to get the password from a safe. So I have a safe called Git T, and it's called Git T-admin-accounts, and we'll select the Git T-admin one. So I'll add that and save it. And I'll just open the user portal in a new tab this time. And if we look here under settings, you can see that this account no longer has the brad.admin. Uh, the username and password has changed for this account. So I'll just cancel out of that. And if we select this, we should log in as gitt.admin1 as expected. And what I'll do now is I'll just come to the settings on this one and go to security. I'll just enroll the two-factor authentication just to demonstrate that. I'll just copy the secret. Come back to identity administration. We'll paste this in here. Hit apply. And copy this number here. Go back to settings of the application and we'll paste in that code. We've enrolled. I'll just make sure I'll come back to identity administration and save that. So I'll go back to Git T and log out of this account just to make sure the session has expired. We'll close this and as a user, we'll open up Git T again. And we can see that we logged in with MFA to Git T.admin1. Even though this is an Active Directory account that is rotated by the CPM, the application can still have the TOTP enabled uh, for an, this example scenario. I'll just log out of this application and close this tab. So let's see what happens when we log into this application as John. I'll just do this in Microsoft Edge and we'll log in as John. And we'll go to the user portal. And as we can see, John has a new application here. So let's open up this application and as we can see here, we don't have the required permissions to access this application. So let's close this and I'll show you how we can fix this. If we head over to the other session where I'm logged in as Brad, we'll go to the first tab here, which is the Privileged Cloud Portal. And the reason why John couldn't access that application is because he didn't have the right permissions uh, to this safe. So if I go down to Policies and Safes here, We'll search for Git T. We'll select this one here. 
and we'll go to members. So even though John was in here, I'll show you the permissions here. John only had the ability to list and use the accounts. For WPM, John will need to be able to retrieve the account as well. So I'll just select that and press save. And if we head back over to John's Microsoft Edge session here, and if I reopen this um, application as John, We can see it's authenticated successfully. I'll just log out of this application and close this. So what we can do to improve the security of this is to enable secure web sessions so that we can record uh, the steps that happen in this session. So then auditors can review session activity. Before setting up secure web sessions, I'll just clean up my screen. I'll just close this and close these tabs here. Head back to the accounts view here, I'm logged into the Privilege Cloud portal. I'm actually logged in as the cloud user. Um, and the reason why I wanted to do this is to show you what happens when you first link or log into the secure web sessions tenant. And if we click on the app switcher up here, you'll notice that the secure browsing option here. So this is where you manage the secure browser and secure web sessions. So if I click on that, that will launch a new tab. Of course, this is unique to my environment here. So once you get to this page, click on agree and generate QR code, and then open up the CyberArk mobile app and scan that QR code. I've just done that. Once that's done, you'll be redirected to the secure web sessions sign-in portal. Again, you will need to use the CyberArk mobile app to authenticate. I'll just scan that now. So before we can access a tenant, we need to validate the identity user. So we can do this one or two ways. We can do it from the mobile app itself, or we can click on this validate identity user here. So let's click on that. And as you can see, that's authenticated to identity successfully. If I switch back to Privilege Cloud and open up the Identity Administration, and if I go to Roles and search for SWS, we can see the SWS Portal Access user here. In this role, you can see the members, this user here was automatically linked. Now let's say you didn't want to link this user, you meant to link a different user. In this case, I'll link the user I normally log in with. We can fix this on the mobile app. I'll try and bring this up on the screen here. I'll open up the CyberArk mobile app and we'll select the company on the left-hand side. You might only have one. I've got many in my account. Put in your PIN code for the application and down the bottom right, select credentials. We'll put in our username and our password and our MFA code. There we are, the credentials are updated successfully. And back in Identity Administration, if I refresh this page, we can see the user is now the address that I want to use. And if I switch back to the Secure Browsing tab here, and on the left-hand side, if we head down to Activities, we can see the username has updated. I did do this offline a couple of times to test it before recording it. And if you're on the left here, if you come down to identities, then users, this is where you can add additional or invite additional administrators or users to the platform. Now that we've provisioned the secure web sessions portal, let's head back to identity administration and come down to web apps. We'll open up this Git T web app and we'll open up secure web sessions. We'll tick this box here and it says here it can take up to 15 minutes for SWS to be enabled. Um, but if we hit OK and hit Save, and the reason why that message comes up is when you click on here, it won't be able to find that URL. And that's what that 15 minute means. But we can speed this process up by closing this and going to the secure browsing portal here and opening up the application policies under secure web sessions and pressing the refresh button here. 
if I refresh this browser screen, and of course we can see the application of Git T here. And if we click into this, it will pick up the users that have access to this application. If I open up the John user here, we can see the SWS uh, extension uh, is enforced and we've got the step recording and session protection enabled. So let's demonstrate this now. I'll just close this. I'll do this in the Microsoft Edge browser. We'll log in as John. We'll go back to the user portal and we can see this purple icon here, which means secure web sessions is enabled for this application. So if I try and click on this, John will receive this error because the SWS extension is not installed. So let's click on this icon up here and come to manage extensions. We'll get extensions for Microsoft Edge over here. We'll search for CyberArk and we're after the CyberArk Secure Web Sessions extension. I'll just close this pane here, but I'll just um, pin it over here. So I'll close this tab and clean up this screen. So the extension has automatically authenticated because I'm signed into identity. And now let's try and open up the Git T application. So of course the user is reminded the session will be monitored. They can change how often they want to be reminded, but we'll just select continue. So now that we're logged in, I'll just perform a couple of actions. We'll go to the settings here. We'll go down to security, look at our SSH keys or something like that. And I'll come down to webhooks. And what I'm doing here is demonstrating what will happen when the auditors review this session. So I'll just log out of this session and close this tab. And if I head back to the other session as Brad, we can come up here and go to session recordings. So you'll be prompted for a QR code here. And this is so that we can decrypt the recordings using the secret that's in the mobile app. I'll just scan that now. And as we can see here in the last 24 hours, we've had this Git T session and it lasted two minutes here. Uh, so the administrator can, or auditor can click on this and then they can browse through the session and see what the user did uh, when they interacted with this session. So it will take a screenshot every time they click or interact with the browser session. I'll finish the video here. Next time we'll cover how we can set up the CyberArk Secure Browser in conjunction with Secure Web Sessions. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you on the next video.